Welcome back to the introduction to particle systems. In the last video, we had set up the dynamic light that's moving all around, giving us that very nice natural fire lighting illumination. And of course, at the end of the video, we had to rebuild lighting, and we did that off camera. So now we're back. Let's go ahead and jump in there and take a look at what the final effect looks like. Oh, yeah, look at that. Very nice shadows. We can see the intensity fluctuating just a little bit from the lighting. Shadows are bouncing around. Everything looks fantastic. Very convincing. I'm sold. can almost smell the smoke. Almost. So uh, let's go ahead and turn our attention to this other particle system. Why? Simple. Because in this video, what we're going to do is show you how we can control various aspects of a particle system from Kismet. That's right. And this is going to require that we make use of the particle parameter distribution, which we discussed earlier on in the distribution video. Now, what are we actually going to try to achieve? Well, let me turn on real time so we can see our... Try effect. to achieve? No, we are going to achieve it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take our blue sparks and set up a system by which we can change through uh, different colors when we use a trigger. And then at the same time, when we use that trigger, we're going to invert the gravity of our orange sparks and make them accelerate toward the ceiling instead of the floor. And when we toggle it back, it'll go back towards the floor. That's right. Now, this is going to be a really simple setup. It's not anything super glamorous, but with just this quick demonstration, you're going to see that you get a lot of power afforded to you uh, through using Kismet with your particle system with ease of setup. Okay, so let's start off by jumping into our particle system. I'll go ahead and kill real time out here. I'll open up the generic browser and I'll double click on our part simple sparks. Now, the first effect that I want to tackle is the shifting of our colors. So we'll jump over here to our second particle system, and we're looking at our initial color. Currently, this is set to a constant value of uh, pale blue at 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 1. I'm going to commit those numbers to memory. Actually, I've committed them to paper, but you guys can't see my paper. Uh, we're going to change this distribution over to a distribution vector particle parameter. Parameter, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, let's click on this, and now check out what we get. First off, we have a parameter name. You must use a name, because this parameter is going to be called by Kismet through the name that you choose. So let's call this one Spark color. Okay. All right. That works. Now we need to, uh, t I'm going to take a look at our mapping. We don't necessarily have to take a look at our mapping. We could probably work around it, but uh, what I'm going to do is take our mapping and set it from a range, an input range coming in from Kismet between negative one and a positive one. Okay. And really all I'm worried about is Z because if you remember, we're only accelerating in the Z axis. That's right. So I don't really care what X and Y are doing. Now our output range, I'm going to set between Positive, or well, for minimum, negative 200. That's right. I get my positives and negatives switched. And our max output will be positive 200. Of course, the interesting thing in this particular case is Zach has actually shifted over to talking about gravity instead of color. <laughs> oh, isn't that a lot of fun? Have, have we? You're on the initial color. Oh. Negative 200 oh time. Oh, my goodness. Gravity. I have jumped. I have completely. Just That's okay. I did the, the exact world. same thing earlier when I jumped ahead from floats to vectors. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. no big deal. I, I got all excited like we were working with our acceleration, but actually we're working with initial <laughs> color. So just forget all these values that I've set up here. Uh, we're, we're he gonna, was just kidding. Yeah, we're not going to change our distribution at all. In fact, I think I could just reassign this. And, yeah, these all go back to 0 to 1, which okay. is going to work out great. We'll just change our name back to Spark <laughs> Color. All right. So uh, we don't have to change any of our mappings as far as color is concerned. We need them all to stay 0 to 1. However, it would be cool if we set up a default value, which is done under the constant property. Absolutely. So let's set this to 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and... One. So now we have There's those, our blue back. those simple pale blue sparks back. Okay, now with that, we can get out of uh, our particle editor altogether. We'll close out of our generic browser, and it's time to jump into Kismet. We have our little matinee sequence here. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to just Control-Alt, marquee select all of this, right-click, let's create a new sequence, and we'll call this Fire Flicker. Okay. There you go. Just kind of keep that nice and neat. Now, uh, let's create a new sequence. We're going to start off with, uh, let's say, a new action to control our particles. At first I was thinking, well, how are we going to do this? But we'll set that up with a trigger in just a moment. Notice we have a set particle parameter action. So let's click on this. And this requires a few things of us. First off, it's going to require an instance of a particle parameter. We don't have anything in here. We need to add a, an item. So we'll click on this, and we get instance number zero. What parameter are we affecting? What was its name? Our spark color. Spark color. 
What type of information did that parameter hold? Oh, it was a vector. It was a vector. Now, that can be very misleading because you see that there's a color in here, but remember, it is a vector back over in Cascade. That's right. It is a vector, so use a vector. Scroll down a little bit. Now, what would we like to set this vector to? Well, we'll start off with this first, and we'll set it to red. So we'll go with an X value of 1, a Y value of 0.1, and a Z value of 0.1. So it's primarily red. And that'll take care of that. Now, we're almost done. We have to specify a target. Now, what particle system are we talking to? So what I'm going to do is get out of game mode here in the viewport. We'll select our particle emitter. Back over here inside of Kismet, I'm going to right-click, and we'll create a new object variable using emitter 0. And we'll just connect it up like so. All right. Now we just need some way of triggering this. That's right. So what I'll do for starters is we'll pop over here into the level. And here on the right side of the room, I'm going to right-click on the floor, add an actor, and we'll create a basic trigger. But as soon as I create it, we'll jump into its properties. I'm going to go under display and switch off be hidden so that it's visible in the level, just for our demonstration purposes, of course. Okay. Now with that, we can come back over here into Kismet right-click and choose New Event using Trigger 2, and we'll create a Use Trigger. Now let's space some things out just a little bit. Also, I need to select my Use Trigger, and let's set its max trigger count to zero so I can use it as many times as I want. Now for a very simple demonstration to show this in action, I'm just going to make a direct connection. We'll close out of Kismet, and let's test this out. So we'll play from here. We have blue sparks. They look great. And we'll use our trigger and the sparks turn red. Hey, very nice. That's very it. easy. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. But now let's take it and push it a little bit. So let's go back into Kismet. In fact, I'm going to enlarge Kismet all the way up. And give it just a second to do its thing. And it's, it's almost here. There we go. There we go. Now, I'm going to take my set particle param, and I can just hit Control-C and Control-V, and it's still going to be connected to the emitter, so it's still affecting the same emitter. However, I... I'm not a big fan of the strings like overlapping each other. Mm -hmm. So just as a personal preference, what I'm going to do is actually select both of these and copy-paste them. It doesn't really matter. It's just a, a readability thing. It's not going to be any uh, better or worse in terms of performance. And let's go ahead and paste again. So now we have three primary colors that we have access to. So uh, let's take our second color, and we're going to set this to blue. Or let's say green in this one. So, okay. uh, so point 0.1. Point 0.1, and then 1, and point 0.1. Okay. And we'll take our last one, and we'll set this to point 0.1, point 0.1, and 1. So we have R, G, and B as our primary colors. But we need some way to select between the three of them. How about randomly select between the three of them? That'll work. I like it. So let's break our connection here, and I'll move my trigger down to in the middle of everybody. Let's right-click and go to New Action, and we're going to grab a switch. And we have a random switch. Ooh, very cool. All right, so there we go. Now, we need to control the number of links that we have available to us. Fortunately, there is a link count property, which takes care of this. Let's set this to a total of three. And we'll set red to number one, green to number two, and blue to number three. Then we just plug in our trigger, and we're really, we're set to go. Okay. That's all there is to it. So let's get out of Kismet. Play from here. And it's too bad we have to still look at the uh, trigger. I'll turn that off the next time we go in there. But now we have vibrant blue. It's yes, no longer that do. pale blue. Let's hit it again, and they turn green. Ooh, nice and green. Hit it again, and they're red. Ooh, we got all three in the first go. Okay. Now, hit it again, it's red it again. Down. There we go. Now it's green. Da -da -da. Now it's red again. So we are getting randomization. It's not the same thing every time or the same and cycle. Blues. That's right. Very nice, very nice. So, yeah, we're cycling through colors. Now, just real quick, before I forget, because I will, I'm going to switch off B, aim to interact, and we'll increase our interact distance to about 200. Okay, so that's looking good. The next thing I want to do is set up a system that will take our acceleration and invert it. So we're sending our orange particles up toward the ceiling, and we'll leave our blue particles alone. So let's close out of Kismet. Let's go back into our particle system inside of Cascade. And, of course, now it is time for us to switch our focus over to acceleration, where we're emulating gravity. That's right. Now, this is what I was actually trying to set up a second ago. <laughs> it was. So let's uh, take our uh, distribution, distribution, and we're going to set this over to a parameter. And we'll set our parameter name to 
spark gravity. Not gravity or gravity. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, now we're going to pay attention to our mappings. Now, you don't really have to do this. You could just as easily say inside of Kismet that you're going to set this to specific values and whatnot. But what I'm going to do is take our max input, the number that we are expecting to receive from Kismet, and we're going to set this to a range between negative 1 and 1. Now, you'll notice he's only working with Z, and that's because our gravity has been set up to only affect the Z axis. Right, so we don't care what X and Y are doing. That's right. Now, I'm going to take our max, oh, I'm sorry, our uh, <laughs> min output that's right. is going to be negative 200, and our max output is going to be positive 200, which will, in fact, push our particles up toward the ceiling. So if we receive a negative 1 coming from Kismet, what we're going to actually get put into the parameter here is going to be a negative 200, which will give us our particles going down motion. Right. And, of course, we receive a value of 1 from Kismet. That is going to be mapped over to a value of positive 200, which, which is going to make them, them go up. Now, let's go ahead and set a uh, default in here. Right, because right now our constant uh, our default, default zero, value is zero, and as you can see, our orange particles aren't falling at all. They're just shooting out into space. So let's set this to negative 1. Notice we're not setting it to negative 200 anymore because negative 1 is the equivalent of negative 200 now because of that mapping. All right, so we're done with that. Let's get out of our particle system, and just for safety's sake, let's save our package. And we'll close out of the generic browser. Let's go into Kismet. Give that a second to pop up. Now, I'm going to use our same trigger to do this. Uh, the first thing, though, is we need to set up our set particle parameter node, because we're going to use the same type of node to do sure. this. And we can just, I'll grab our emitter, too. Now, again, you could have all these pointing to the same variable uh, just to keep things nice and neat in the screen. I'm not doing that. So we'll hit Control-C, and I'll hit Control-V to paste this in. Now, we need to change some things in our instance parameters. Instead of uh, affecting spark color, we are instead going to affect spark gravity, which is still a vector, so we don't have to worry about that. But what is the value you want this vector to have? Well, let's do 0 to 0. And uh, the first time we hit it, we want to give it a value of positive 1, which will send our particles up into the air. That's right. Now, the next time we hit it, we want to fire them back down. So we'll take the same thing. We'll hit Control-C, Control-V. And you know what, just for the fun of it, uh, just to show that we can, this one I really will connect back into itself so okay. you can see both ways. And we'll select this, and I'm going to come down to my vector, and we'll set this to negative 1, which will pull our particles back down toward Earth. Okay, now we just need some way to toggle in between these. And in previous videos, we showed you how you could set up a toggling system by checking the value of a Boolean, and then changing that value based on whether or not your result was true or false. It's something that we did earlier in the matinee videos, if you followed along with those already. Now we're going to do something fairly simple, because we don't really need access to that, uh, that switch status. Mm-hmm. So we'll right-click, and I'll go to New Action, and we have a switch, and we have just a basic switch. Now, just like our random above, this has a link count. We're going to set this, of course, only to 2, and we want to be able to use it over and over again, so let's do B looping. And what this means is the first time it gets a hit, it's going to send out link 1. The second time, link 2. Because it's looping, the third time it's hit, it'll send out link 1 again. Right. And the fourth, it'll do link 2. And Otherwise, it'll... it would just stop if you didn't have B looping on after it goes through link 1, then link 2. Yeah, so you want to make sure it loops. Then we can just take our trigger, connect it in here, take link 1, set it up here, take link 2, connect like so, and we're finished. So let's test this out. We'll close everything off. Let's jump into the level. And what we should get is the blue particle should change to some random color, and then our orange particle should fly up toward the ceiling. So boom. Hey, hey. And there we go. Now let's <laughs> hit it again, and our particles now fall down again, and we get a new color. And hit it again, and now the particles are flying up, and we got a new color. Beautiful. So yeah, we have all sorts of cool effects going on here. Now, that's a quick look at actually changing properties. The only other thing I wanted to show you, and this is real quick and easy to set up, is the ability to turn a particle system on and off using Kismet. So let's jump back out of the game. I'm going to take this existing trigger that we have and just alt-drag it uh, over here to the left so we have a second trigger. Let's immediately go into Kismet, and I'll right-click, and we'll say New Event Using Trigger 2, and this will be another Use Trigger. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and set my max trigger count to zero, first thing. Now, turning a particle system on and off is very easy. It just requires a toggle. So let's right-click, New Action, have a toggle, and we'll just use the basic toggle, nothing to it. 
and I'm going to take my trigger and just attach it to toggle. So every time I use it, we'll either turn it on or turn it off based on its current state. Now, we could just take our target and connect it over here, or if you wanted to, you can make a copy of this variable. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, the same effect either way. So let's close this and give it a test. So right-click and play from here. So let's come over here to this trigger, and now when we use it, boom, our particles go away. Very nice. Use it again, particles come back on. Now, the cool thing is if you wanted to, you can switch your particles off, come over here and make a change by using this trigger, and come back over here and turn them back on, <laughs> and they have particles flying up toward the ceiling, and now they're red instead of orange. And bouncing all off the rafters. Very nice. nice. All right, now that's just a quick look at affecting particles using Kismet. And again, this was a very simple example. There's all sorts of ways you could employ this. So use your imagination, play with some of these nodes, and come up with some killer effects. And that's going to wrap things up for this video.